when Linda invited me, she said, you can talk about whatever you want. Um, and what I, uh, what I had, had uh, set forth to talk about was, uh, I work on worker safety and health, and I've been doing this work for 32 years for the AFL-CIO, and so like many of you have seen a lot. Um, and I think that when we look back over the last number of decades, um, we can all agree that uh, with the work that we started doing back in the 60s, back in the 70s, there was a lot of progress, there was a lot of momentum, uh, and then running into opposition, you know, brick walls, uh, running into uh, individuals who basically wanted just to change the direction uh, that we were moving in. Uh, and so where we look where we are today, um, we've really been through quite a patch here and quite a difficult time with respect to all of our efforts to have issues like asbestos disease, other environmental problems, other worker safety and health problems addressed. Um, but I do believe, as uh, much as we've been through and as cynical as I am, that there really are some opportunities that we now have. And it's the first time in a long time where we actually have had opportunities to try and move forward. So I want to talk about um, what some of those opportunities are and how we can engage to try to uh, take advantage of the moment that we have in front of us uh, to try and uh, make some progress uh, that we've all been uh, um, so seeking uh, for so long. Um, to look forward here, I think we just have to take a moment to understand what we've been through, not only for the last eight years, but perhaps the last 16, last 20 years. It really, ever since, uh, um, in my mind, it goes back to the years of Ronald Reagan, when immediately upon taking office, we had actions taken against labor unions, we had actions take, taken against scientists and the regulatory agencies, uh, we have a whole lot of opposition to moving forward with basic protections of workers, basic protections of uh, public health. And we made, you know, we made some progress during some of the years. We kept at it. Um, but again, it's become more and more difficult. And in the last eight years, what we have faced, for those of us doing work in this field under the Bush administration, is really in an atmosphere of total neglect and hostility. Um, that began uh, immediately up upon the Bush administration taking office, going after worker protections. The very first piece of legislation that President Bush signed when he became president was a bill and a law to repeal OSHA's ergonomic standard to protect workers against back injuries and other problems. So that was the very first law that he signed. I think it said a lot about what was to come uh, for the next eight years. Uh, and after that, we saw action withdrawing uh, regulations on dozens of, of uh, workplace hazards that have been in the works for you know for years and years. Uh, we saw them going after the Environmental Protection Agency, the scientists who were trying to speak out, whether it was on the hazards of 9-11, whether it was on other hazards, and basically trying to suppress the evidence and the information that was out there. They went after the budgets of these agencies, OSHA, MSHA, NIOSH, EPA, um, again, it was just a, uh, a steady drumbeat, a constant attack on the basic uh, right of workers and the public to be protected by their, uh, by their government. Uh, so here we are now, uh, eight years after that, we've survived. We've survived. Uh, we've survived and in some ways we've been able to, to move forward. But that eight years of hostility and neglect uh, in an action has left us in a huge, very huge, deep hole in which to try to uh, try to move forward. Um, in, you know, in the workplace, we still have you know, 5,500 workers being killed by job injuries every year. But then when we look at occupational diseases, the estimates are 50,000, 60,000 workers dying every year. And 10,000 of those are from asbestos-related diseases. 10,000 workers dying every year from asbestos diseases still in this country. Um, we have millions of workers being injured. We have uh, workers continuing to be exposed, as we have heard, to toxic chemicals, asbestos uh, in the workplace with very little enforcement on, uh, against employers who are putting workers in harm's way. We've got hazards like silica, still not adequately regulated. And then we've got the new hazards that are coming forward. You look at what's happening in the area of nanotechnology. Uh, that's moving forward and being introduced across the board with no regulation, no real studies on the hazards here, could easily become 
the next asbestos. So when we talk about prevention, we need to get ahead of those kinds of hazards before they are introduced and before people are exposed. And so where we are today, I think we, we, we do have an opportunity. Um, I think with the change in the government, we now have a president who is committed to putting the country back to work for the people and for the workers of this country. Uh, we have an administration that is committed to trying to return decisions about health, decisions about safety based upon science, committed, we hope, to enforce the laws of the land. And we are beginning to see a change with the appointments that are being made in various, um, uh, in various agencies. We're seeing a change about a budget that begins to make investments in these programs. It's going to be an increase in the investment in worker safety and health and enforcement and standard setting, 30% increase in the Environmental Protection Agency, and so there's going to be money and priority put into these programs. And so there is this window of opportunity that we have, that we have not had in a very, very long time. And I think that window of opportunity allows us to try and do a few things. I think first and foremost is to get some public attention, renewed attention back to these issues that matter. The fact that workers are still being exposed to asbestos and other hazards in the workplace. The fact that asbestos products are still being distributed in commerce uh, in this country. And to get attention focused back on those issues. We need to get renewed attention you know, back to the fact that workers should have a right to go to work and not be exposed you know, and come home safe and sound at the end of the day, that the public has a right to live their lives in the community without fear and threat that they are basically being, uh, being poisoned. Okay. I think there's an opportunity now, finally, to get legislation passed to ban uh, asbestos. And there are opportunities, I think, in some other areas that we have to think about. There is going to be health care reform in this country. And I think we have to think about how, through health care reform, we are able to do some of the things that we want to do, to try and get better information about what is going on with diseases that are occurring, so that we can use that base of information to do the kind of studies and follow-up to make the connections about the exposures. We have to look at health care reform as a way of making sure that those who are sick, whether it's from a non-occupational cause, an occupational and environmental cause, have the right of access to health care. And so we have a terrible workers' compensation system or systems in this country uh, that are taking care of workers. We've got to make sure that those workers don't get left behind. Yep. And if we have a country that's providing access to health care, they've got to be providing it for whether that disease is caused by, as I said, work or whether it's caused by, by something else. Um, and so, again, there are opportunities, uh, I think, that we, we have that we haven't had in a long time. And I think internationally, we have the opportunity now to have the United States you know, step up globally you know, to push for those basic labor and environmental protections in our trade agreements, uh, to push for those to be enforceable, and to support rather than to oppose the international efforts to ban asbestos and to address, and to address other hazards. But I think, again, there's that opportunity uh, but nobody else is going to make this happen. And the opportunity is there. But we're the ones that are going to have to make it happen to step up. It's not going to be the elected officials in Congress, uh, and there are some who are committed. But as we heard from John, uh, they have a year, you come in, they say, oh, that's very sad, oh, I'm outraged, thank you very much, and they move on. And there's a lot of competition out there, and the country is in a mess. We've got an economic and financial crisis going on. We've got 10% you know, unemployment uh, in many areas around the country. So there are huge issues, huge challenges that we face. And we have to make sure that the, some of the issues that we care about, people being continue to be exposed to asbestos, the diseases that are occurring, the deaths that are occurring, the fact that we need more research uh, to these matters, and the fact that we need um, to develop the kind of treatments that will make, enable people uh, to live. And so I think, as we think about today, we hear, again, many of the, uh, the work that is being done here, that we have to think about what opportunities we have now to try and move forward and make a difference. I think we have to look at trying to reclaim our government, reclaim the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, as we heard earlier, they've been you know, AWOL for 
decades on this issue. We've got to make sure when we have the new administrator, Lisa Jackson, when she's up in Libby, Montana, uh, that it's not only Libby that she's hearing about, that she's hearing about that there are other asbestos problems and exposures around the country. We've got to make sure that the new head of toxics at EPA, and I don't know who that will be, that asbestos is at the top of his or her list of something to be acted upon. And so, again, we have to look forward here, think about those things that we want to get done. We've got to come out of this meeting with an agenda. Banning asbestos, getting more money into the research on asbestos, getting better enforcement of the asbestos standards that do exist. Come up with that agenda, come up with a plan, and come up with a strategy and be united about how we're going to move forward to take advantage of this window opportunity to finally reclaim our government, get these issues addressed, and make sure that we are doing everything we can to seize the opportunity that we have to bring about some real change to protect workers and the public. Thank you very much.